Hey everybody, it's your Peacekeeper coming at you with the next video in our How to Play series on the U.S. Cruiser Line. This is the Tier 5 Omaha Class Cruiser. The Omaha Class consisted of 10 light cruisers completed between 1923 and 1924. They are in no particular order the Omaha, Milwaukee, Cincinnati, Raleigh, Detroit, Richmond, Concord, Trenton, Marblehead, and Memphis. The class was intended to be a light scout cruiser designed to scout ahead of a battleship task force while also escorting destroyers. The Omaha class was designed specifically to compete with the Centaur subclass of the C-class, or Caledon class as we know it in this game, cruisers from the United Kingdom. Even though a war between the United States and the United Kingdom at that time period was extremely improbable. The class's appearance closely resembles that of the Clemson class destroyers, and just as an interesting side, the U.S. Navy actually developed a camouflage pattern to enhance this appearance resemblance between the two ships, although the Omahas were, of course, significantly larger than the Clemson class destroyer. In spite of having very cramped quarters, poorly sealed holes, high, a high center of gravity, and extremely wet decks, the U.S. Navy took great pride in the Omaha class for their enhanced compartmentalization over previous cruiser designs, more efficient machinery layouts, and also improved survivability by alternating the side of the ship that the uh, boiler rooms and turbine rooms were in the hull of the ship, as well as having the first cruiser to have centerline magazines for the gun ammunition storage. In terms of service history, the Omaha class cruisers were the oldest cruisers operated by the U.S. Navy at the onset of World War II. Two of them were present at the the surprise attack on Pearl Harbor, the USS Detroit and USS Raleigh. The Raleigh was hit by a torpedo during the attack, but did not sink and would be repaired and continued to serve on through World War II. Most of the ships were sent away from the front lines, though, due to their age and spent their days basically escorting convoys, patrolling coastlines, or occasionally participating in the bombarding of shores at locations where enemy naval resistance was expected to be very minimal. This did not keep these ships out of combat, though. The US Mar USS Marblehead participated in several battles around the Dutch East Indies, as well as the Battle of Makassar Strait, and the USS Richmond participated in the Battle of Komondorsky Island. So these ships did see combat action with the U.S. Navy. All ten survived the war and would be scrapped. The USS Milwaukee was given to the Russians as part of Lend-Lease and was renamed Murmansk, a ship which is available in this game. Although I haven't seen it for sale in quite a while. Maybe it's for sale now. I don't know. You'll have to go check. I'll have to do a review video on that someday. I also have the Marblehead. I guess I could do that as well. In terms of their in-game performance, the Omaha class takes the very good Phoenix class and improves upon it by adding, at least in the first two hull options, 12 6-inch guns. And in the final hull configuration, we drop down to 10, like the Phoenix. However, we do get a massive increase in anti-aircraft capabilities as it also has that kind of downside of having a reduced torpedo layout. I, it it kind of all balances itself out at the end. There's some other changes there as well. You decide whether you want to run the second hole or the final hole on the Omaha. I personally ran the final hole. I think it's the better of the two. That's my opinion. The Omaha is also slightly more maneuverable than the Phoenix, boasting a 30 meter tighter turning radius and for basically the same rudder shift time, 5.4 versus 5.7 seconds. The ship's hull profile also makes it very difficult for enemy ships to land hits on it when it's charging at them, but unfortunately any hits that do hit the bow are going to penetrate through the bow thanks to these extremely thin 10 millimeters of armor. Basically, if it shoots a 143 millimeter or larger projectile, you can ex accept and plan for any of these shells that you take through the bow are going to penetrate. And that's kind of frustrating because there are a lot of six-inch gun cruisers 
The upside is that the Omaha Citadel is really big, and I realize that it doesn't seem like an upside, but what it does force people to do, and they're really tempted to shoot at this broadside here, oh, I want this lovely Citadel, when in reality, that 76 millimeters of armor, they're not going to penetrate through it if you do angle yourself correctly. And so there are instances in which an Omaha is actually a very durable ship, and to add to that, if you remember the Phoenix had pretty good torpedo arcs, the Omaha actually has better torpedo arcs. And in fact, you'll see that in the combat video for this. The, the arcs are really good, so we can't complain too much about that. But overall, the gameplay style is basically going to require you to use islands and cover to ambush ships as best you can. The AP is extremely strong. It's US 6-inch AP, so it does really well at taking out enemy cruisers. You just have to put yourself in position to actually do that. And let's go ahead and talk about our stats then. In terms of hit points, she has 26,800 hit points, a maximum of 76 millimeters of armor. That is the belt armor there. The main battery consists of 10 6-inch guns. They are mounted. There are two twin turrets. Get rid of the armor layout here. There are two twin turrets, one in the front, one in the rear. And then there are casemate guns. You'll see that there are four casemate guns on the front and only two in the back in the final hull configuration. The second hull, the second upgrade hull, does have two more out the back. So you'd have the dual turret and then four and then an additional four, and then the dual turret for a total of 12 six-inch guns. The torpedo tubes are mounted here at the back of the ship, but they do have very good arcs. They have a five and a half kilometer range, a kind of slow 56 knots. They don't do a whole lot of damage at 11,733, but they do have a very short reload time and a very short detection range of 1.1 kilometers. So they are fairly usable. You just have to put yourself in position to use them. The anti-aircraft suite consists of 10 20 millimeter Orlikens, as well as three dual 40 millimeter Bofors. You will see that there's one in the front and then two towards the back. There are also eight of the three inch 50 caliber Mark 22 Mod 2 guns. They are interspaced throughout the ship, mostly in the middle. And there you can see four and the other four. In terms of her maneuverability, she has a maximum speed of 34 knots, a turning radius of 600 meters, and a rudder shift time of 5.7 seconds. Her detection range without concealment expert is 13.1 kilometers, and her detection range by air is 6.7 kilometers, although you can expect to reduce that with Concealment Expert if you have a captain that has it. As you can see, you're not quite there yet with Mr. Dickinson, so we'll get there eventually with him. In terms of our upgrades, we only have three options to choose from. Main Armaments Mod 1 for the reduction in your main battery being incapacitated, as well as increasing their hit points, as well as decreasing the time it takes to repair them. I'm not taking this one really for the torpedo stuff, because the torpedoes, while useful, aren't something that you just overly rely upon having. However, it is a nice bonus to have. If you are interested in turning this into an anti-aircraft boat, which you really can't do because you're lacking defensive fire, you could take Auxiliary Armaments Mod 1 to increase the survivability of those. Uh, yeah, not really recommended. In the second slot here, uh, again, you have... Two choices, one that I consider the most viable, that's Aiming Systems Mod 1 for the decretion of the, the dispersion by 7%, as well as increasing how fast those torpedo tubes turn by 20%. And if you are, again, going to turn this into an anti-aircraft boat, AA Guns Mod 2, I guess. <laughs> uh, in terms of the third and final slot that's available to us, I recommend taking Propulsions Mod 1. That's going to decrease the chance of your engines being taken out, as well as decrease the time it takes to repair them if they do get taken out. 
you can make a good case for steering gears mod one, which would decrease the chances of your steering gears being taken out by 20%, as well as decreasing the time it takes to repair them by 20%. Damage control systems mod one really isn't all that useful, in my opinion, for cruiser. So I would not recommend that one for any build. Um, you know, overall, I, it's not a bad ship. So enough of me talking about it. To the battle video. All right, so this battle is going to be about 88,000 damage. Uh, I got asked in the previous video why I say how much damage I do. Uh, really, some people measure success of a match based upon how much damage you do. Uh, I personally consider the idea of winning the battle more important than outright damage being done. Or, for instance, if you're spending your entire time hunting destroyers, uh, there is a significant advantage to doing so, uh, but it comes with a corresponding decrease in damage output. I, I just put it out there just so you guys can hear it. It's not because I'm trying to boast or anything. Obviously, 88,000 damage in a Tier 5 cruiser is good, but it's not, like, mind-blowingly amazing. Uh, we are in a Tier 7 fight on the map New Dawn. This is by far my favorite map in this game. This map has stood the test of time from closed beta and is very well known. And it is a fair and relatively balanced map. You've got just about everything for everyone. You've got long open spaces for the battleships to get their battleshipping on. You've got islands for the cruisers and destroyers to play in. It's just a great map overall. This is a standard battle, so we got the two caps. And the goal is to capture their base. That should be pretty obvious if you're at Tier 5 by now. Uh, we are on the north side of this. Our team is weighted to the north side, so we're going to go to the north side. And I generally like to play around in these islands up here where the, there would be a cap up in the B, C, 2 line area. And... Well, there's not on this, obviously, but I, I like generally like to play up there. It's the least favorite area for most ships to go and so you generally don't run into a whole lot of like battleships running up there especially on a map like this where it's a standard battle and there is no uh, reason to really go up there now our whole team is going right along into our cap so we don't want to get too far ahead we do want to support this minikaze if we can if not, we do need to get the heck out of Dodge. Our first customer of the day. It is an Emerald. Now, the Emerald is a really rather soft ship. Uh, you see there, I waited until basically I had no other choice but to engage him. He's not going to really have much of an opportunity to get rounds out on me. Those first salvos hit out of the first six rounds that we fired. We got to ourselves uh, some... some some hits, not a whole lot, but some, um, and did 1700 dam 1800 damage, basically. I switched to AP right away because the Emerald is very, very soft. It doesn't have a whole lot of armor, and it's usually very easy to Citadel, and so we wanted to go ahead and take advantage of that. Now, he's popped up into his smoke. If you're looking for a good, easy way to shoot at ships that are currently in smoke, if you can get a shot off like I did with this one where I knew where his last location was, it's very easy to repeatedly hit these guys while they're sitting in smoke. So you saw there where the shells were landing to get hits. And so we're just going to keep shooting at basically the same point. I mean, we're not doing a whole lot of damage, but you never know. You might get some good hits. And at this point, I have lost where he was at. Uh, when it comes to this, uh, you know, your dispersion is going to spread out the minute you lose having a uh, ship lock so you know we're not detected so i'm just going to go ahead and take advantage of this at least every last aspect that i can i'm sure he has long gone out of that smoke by now uh, you would be surprised at how quickly these guys bail on the idea of hanging out when they are getting pelted in smoke by a ship they can't see um, using islands almost a requirement through and through here you can see here i'm moving very very slowly there's that emerald he finally popped out 
I'm moving slowly here, and I'm using this island for cover, but you see I got detected. Uh, that's not a good thing to have happen. Uh, Fuso will one-shot a broadside Omaha fairly easily. So we're just going to go ahead, you know, we're going to do what we can. Uh, unfortunately, that involves bombarding an island, and we are still detected, and that's going to be by the uh, Texas and New Mexico that are in their cap. That Fuso is thoroughly distracted by something else, so we will go ahead and continue to engage him, but we really want to turn in if we can. We don't want to be presenting any broadside profile to that Fuso at all. Now, like the Phoenix, the fire chance on these guns is really quite good. We've got this emerald here that is broadside, so I'm uh, going to queue up the AP here, but we're going to fire off the HE that we got loaded. Uh, you can see there it does a very good job of doing damage. And in this case, he is turning around. I recognize what he's doing. He's trying to get torpedoes off, so we held off just long enough to do... Uh, about 4,000 damage, and of course he continues to go broadside, so that's a paddling, especially in Royal Navy Cruiser. Enjoy your Citadel hit, and thank you for the sink and first blood. 10,000 damage. So now we've got battleships to shoot at. I'm being shot at by battleships. Thankfully, it is only HE at this point, and they are actually shooting at the Pensacola. Now, the Pensacola is an interesting and frustrating ship in the sense that the Pensacola has the same problem that the Omaha has, and that's that it is one of the most favorite battleship targets in the game. Basically, the massive Citadel makes for a lot of really fun dev strikes. I'm glad the Royal Navy cruisers came out to kind of alleviate some of this, but uh, it still hasn't gotten rid of the reputation of these ships to basically get popped. <laughs> So, all right, so long-range gunnery fire on that New York. My goal here is to set them on fire. Again, we have lost, uh, you know, they've lost detection on me, and we're using islands to shoot over. Now, I'm not necessarily sitting right up against the island like I was at the beginning of this. That is certainly a viable tactic if there's nothing else that you can really utilize. But in this way, I've, I've put islands between myself and whatever could possibly be detecting me and that allows me to engage a lot of targets without actually taking any fire and you can see you know we've we've basically no not basically we haven't taken any damage at all this entire match and not yet anyway and it, it's put me into a really good position you know that that new york is burning i don't know if that's my fire if that's somebody else's fire that appears to be my fire so we're going to go ahead and we're just going to keep lighting them up. I've got this island between us. Nobody's detecting me. I might as well continue to abuse him rather than leap out into the open. And this is a good skill for you to learn going forward. If you are... Oh, start another fire. If you are in a U.S. cruiser, you lack the utility of some of the other cruiser lines. Specifically thinking of like the Royal Navy cruisers where they have torpedoes, they have good stealth, they have smoke at tier five. And while the Emerald isn't the world's greatest cruiser, all of those things together can make for a very strong ship when played well. The Omaha has torpedoes, but they are short range and it has a much larger detection range with that 13.1 kilometers. So we started that other Texas on fire because we lost sight of this other Texas. Well, we're going to switch back to him because he's almost dead. We want to get him out of the fight. And generally speaking, battleship captains that have been playing the game. Oh, there's another fire. <laughs> generally speaking, battleship captains that have been started on fire and who have been playing this game for a while know that with one fire, you don't put it out. You save that repair for when it's absolutely necessary. So I switched right away to kind of maximize how much fire damage I had. This New York that we're currently engaging is going to burn to death. Yes, thankfully. We started him on fire one more time before he died. That That's, that's almost like adding insult to injury and salting the wounds. Um, we are detected. I'm not terribly worried about it at this point. Uh, the ship that is detecting me is, of course, that New Mexico, and he does have 17.3 kilometer ranges. Ranges, wow, English. He does have a 17.3 kilometer range if he is specced for it. Um, he's shooting HE, though, so I'm really not worried about him. Like, seriously, not an issue. Not even close to an issue. This Texas, we are going to continue to engage him, though. We do want to... Yep, he's down. Okay, so now we're... Now it's kind of like, well, now what? <laughs> we, we've taken out four of their ships, 
and their whole team has basically gone to the southeast corner. Now, if I wanted to be a jerk face, I could sit back here and continue to do, you know, sit and plink at people from long range. But really what needs to happen is, is we need to get in their cap. We need to force some issues here. We got this New Mexico that is getting lit up by an Atlanta hiding behind an island. And let's try and see if we can't help him. If that means taking fire, or bow tanking shots, trying to, um, you know, draw his attention. Let's do it because in Atlanta, that is well played. He's obviously hiding behind an island, so he's doing a very good job. Okay, so he, he came out and the New Mexico basically told him no. <laughs> he's not putting up with this crap. So somewhere around here has got to be a destroyer. You see, saw me pop my hydro acoustic there. Uh, that's because of the destroyer smoke. And there is our kamikaze. Now it's time to actually do a cruiser's roll and engage this destroyer. Unfortunately, the gun arcs aren't nearly as favorable as the torpedo arcs are in this ship. And we, we, Well, there's the torpedo arcs. I'm, I'm putting those torpedoes midway through because my anticipation is for him to come into those and kind of turn around. Uh, maybe come towards us. He goes the opposite way. Jerk. Um, and, and so, you know, it's fine. It, it really is fine. The torpedoes reload quick enough. It's not a huge deal. And you saw me peeking over the island here trying to see if we couldn't maybe get some extra shots in. Uh, we want to be using our WASD to continually avoid incoming shell fire. We do still have a Fuso as well as a Furutaka. And both of those ships are quite capable. However, they are behind islands to me. Awesome. I am glad that they are behind islands to me. Our hydro goes down, so we throw our scout plane up. And that is just wise consumable usage. That Fuso is going to be poking around the outside of this island. That makes me really nervous. I hate when battleships do this. Uh, at these ranges, your best bet is to slightly... Ang yes! All right, so we only took one shell hit from that. Your best bet to dealing with a battleship at these ranges is to angle yourself ever so slow. Man, not this much. <laughs> I'm trying to stay in the cap circle, but uh, ultimately that's not really going to work terribly well. But uh, we do want to angle ourselves such that there is sufficient time that when he shoots, we can maneuver... And ooh, there's that kamikaze again. And we have sufficient time to maneuver and either avoid taking a whole broadside or at least minimize the damage that we take. Maybe maybe RNG will bless us and we won't have to deal with... Uh, there goes the kamikaze. And we won't have to deal with massive citadel hits. Now, the greatest part of that kamikaze smoke is it does give me a slight reprieve from the Fuso's horrible, horrible... Oh, God, no! Oh, he overshot me. Um, man, talk about getting lucky. You know, we're at 60,960 damage, basically 61,000 damage. That airplane is what's spotting me. I'd like to get rid of him if I can. That would be a huge benefit. We have started this Fuso on fire, I think, three times now. And we are going away from him. My goal with this is, one, get out of his gun range to the point where I can maneuver. Of course, he is going to change his engagement target to a different ship. I'm assuming there is a battleship that was broadside to him that he was thinking, no, nah, that's a paddling, got to take care of that. Uh, good for him. I'm glad he didn't shoot at me because now I started on fire two more times. This thing is a, f well, okay, he was still repairing. But this thing is a freaking flamethrower, um, and that's, by and large, one of the best aspects of this ship. Also, we do need... There's another fire. We do need to pay attention to the fact that that Furutaka has not shown up yet. We are literally raffle stomping their entire team. However, that Furutaka can make my day absolutely miserable depending on where he's at. We know... Oh, there yeah, he got spotted. Excellent. So with him being spotted and him being basically broadside to me, I'm going to continue to shoot at the Fuso as I turn in towards him. Again, remember from the first part of this that there is a high likelihood that... Oh! Arsonist! And a fourth kill. Do remember that these ships will take Citadel hits through the nose. However, Mr. Furutaka... He has launched torpedoes. The Furutaka has torpedoes, so yes, I popped Hydro. Uh, you will notice that I am shooting AP at him. 
well, why would you be shooting AP at him? That makes absolutely no sense. There's the torpedo arcs, and there's the reason why I shoot AP at him. He has a citadel. So we are going to turn and go the other way, and we are going to use our charged torpedoes. Look at these arcs. Those arcs are insane. People like the arcs on the um, Graf Spee. The arcs on the Omaha are just as good. Anyway, the battle ends before we can sink this Furutaka. Uh, I, chances are we would have probably traded out and not been able to kill him. But four kills, 88,900 some odd damage, 1640 base XP. Again, four kills. A lot of fun. There's the damage screen. You can see 38,000 damage done in fires. I do like the Omaha. I do like the Marblehead, and I do like the Murmansk. They're a lot of fun to play, although they can be a little frustrating if you're new to U.S. cruisers. Uh, the soft broadside really hurts if you're not paying attention, so make sure to keep yourself angled. Anyway, I'm your peacekeeper. Like, comment, subscribe, and thank you for watching.